This is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Father, I ask you to anoint this word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We're reading from Isaiah chapter 1, starting at verse 3 until God says to stop. Now, this is an important message uh, because we're dealing with how God feels about people who are blindfolded to their own predicament and a predicament God is not pleased with. So I want you to hear this loud and clear. Starting at verse 3, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not even consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. For those of you who don't know what forsake means, it means forget. You have forgotten the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. In other words, they're backstepping. They're backsliding. They're not making progress. They are regressing. They're getting worse and worse. Just giving you a little enlightenment on what that means. Verse 5, why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. Or you can say weak. Whatever. Starting at verse 6, from the sole of your foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed or mended or healed. Okay. Neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. They haven't even been treated. Okay. Like a bed sore that just gets worse and worse. Okay. Listen, I, I want to describe a bed sore real quick before I finish reading. So you get the picture of what God's trying to say. Some of us are so angry. So bruised, so broken, so hurt, so bitter, so, so uh, resentful. Oh, I can't even, uh, anyway, so wounded that you know, we don't deal with it. We just cover it up and dress it up and go to work, and do our little thing and, you know, camouflage it, put on our little mask. But what God is saying is he sees there is a sickness. We are sin sick. And there's something in our spirits and our hearts and our minds that is so warped. Some of you can't keep your hands off your wife. Some of you women can't keep your hands off your kids because you're so angry and so full of rage that you just spoil and ruin it for everybody. And you have the can't help it. You can't help it. Cuss them out and put them down and tongue lash at every turn because everything and everybody gets on your doggone nerves. And you don't realize it's because you have running open sores in your spirit, in your emotions, in your heart, in your mind. Now, for those of you who have never seen a bed sore, a bed sore is called a decupitus. And a decupitus is, is an opening. It's an eruption in the skin. And it starts off looking like a busted blister where the skin, the, the uh, membrane has been removed from the blister. And then it just continues to get worse and worse. What causes it is a person laying in the same position, not being moved around, not being massaged, not being stimulated, but they're laying in that same position because they're being neglected purposefully or or mistakenly. Either way, it's still the same result. So there's damage happening to the skin, to the tissue of the skin. And it's a pressure point. And it gets deeper and deeper and it starts to become infected. And it starts to get runny and full of pus. And it gets deeper. And I have been, uh, I remember in a convalescent home, I'm just explaining this so you understand what God sees in our hearts, mind, spirit, soul, emotions, all of that. And how it affects our lives and our relationships. Well, in this decupitus, I have seen a nurse put on a glove, an extra long glove. Because she had to 
put ointment, disinfectant ointment on the glove with lubricant so she could ease into that area. And sometimes the sore uh, burrows so deep that you could actually touch the bone underneath. But they have to clean that wound. And what God is saying is there's not even any attempt to clean the wounds. It's like you're just ignoring it. Okay, that's. I just wanted you to see that picture. So I'm going to read verse 7 again. Excuse me, not verse 7, verse 6 again. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. You know, those things stink too, by the way. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Just left to rot. Okay. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your, your life is full of, of, of uh, you, uh, I'm trying to, trying to get this so you can really picture what the word is saying. It's, it's a, a very destructive form of, of approaching life. Relationships are destructive. You sabotage every good thing and make it bad and rotten because of all the rottenness that's in you. Okay, uh, your country is desolate, you're empty. Your cities are burned with fire, just destruction. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. So, so you've got people in your lives that are also destructive, and they're adding insult to injury, and you're letting them. For the sake of love, or being liked, or accepted, whatever. I'm adding Pat's two cents, and my little, you know, okay, listen. And it is desolate, again, empty, as overthrown by strangers. That's similar to a prostitute's lifestyle with a pimp that's just sucking the life out of her and using her up and spitting her out. Oh, but he's counting them bucks. And in the meantime, the prostitute's life is just going down, 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 just total self-destruct. Okay, just want to paint a picture. Verse 8. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been a Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ears unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. Basically saying people who are bent on living a sinful life. Okay. Verse 11, here it is. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Why? Why bother? Saith the Lord. I am full. You know what that means when he says I am full? I said I've had it up to here. I am full of your of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. and I delight not in the blood of bullocks. Or of lambs or of he goats. It's like all your little sacrifices, singing in the choir, rehearsing for the plays, and all the little time you're giving to the women's group, and all your all the money you're giving, and all your offerings, and all your sacrificial time, and blah 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 blah. I don't want to hear all that. Okay, listen to this. This is where God's going with this. I'm trying to bring it to today, so you really hear what what He's saying. Okay, verse twelve. When you come to appear before me, now you come to church, right? When you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand to tread my courts? It's like saying, who invited you to my house? You know, what you doing at my house? What you doing here? There's nothing that we have in common. What are you doing in my house? I didn't invite you. So what are you doing here? That's what he's saying. Okay. When you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand? To tread my courts. Verse 13. Bring no more vain. That means useless, pointless. Uh, uh, okay. It's a waste. So let's go to verse 13. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths. The calling of assemblies. I cannot away with it. 
It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Whoa, that's deep, ain't it? That God would say that about all your church and worship gatherings. <sighs> that's deep. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. Have you ever heard somebody tell you, I'm so sick and tired of you and your nonsense? Hello. Okay, verse 15. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear your hands are full of blood. Verse 16. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Excuse me. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be like red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, I had to put the rubber neck in there, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. <sighs> I'm going to stop there. It, it continues to stay a little deep. That's a mouthful in and of itself, you guys. Whoa. Can you imagine feeling like you're going to church and you're doing all the little church stuff and you're doing the church gyrations and you're standing up and you're praising God and you're sitting down and you stand up and you give your offering and you sit down and you stand up and you say prayers and you sit down and you, you, you I mean, all of this stuff we do, I call it church calisthenics. And we really think that we are earning God's favor. But there are so many people living in the church that are so steeped in sin that God is totally turned off. Listen, one time the Lord gave me a dream to show you how God feels about some things. This is really bizarre. One time God gave me a dream. Listen to this. It's very deep, you guys. So it's going to be a little disgusting. So I hope you don't have a weak tummy. In this dream, I dreamt I was sitting at a church, and the church service was just about ending. And somebody pointed out as we were getting dismissed and the benediction had been spoken. Somebody said, oh, look, there's a pile. Somebody left a pile of feces in the chair back there. Uh, huh? So we all go over to see. It was like, no, in church, who would do something crazy like that? The whole thing was symbolic. So listen, okay, so we go and somebody, oh, we got to clean that up. But nobody cleaned it up. Next thing, I turn around to see what I could get to clean things up with. And there, is, there are feces dropping. You know what feces are? Doo-doo. Bowel movement. Yeah. Droppings all over the floor of the church. And here was really where it got weird. Most of it was at the altar. We know where you go up front to get prayer. Or you go up front to pray and confess and get yourself together. Yeah. That's where most of the feces was. The droppings, they were big droppings too. Do you know everybody forgot about it? The men were putting up the chairs, stacking them up. Other people, were, the sound people were putting up the mics. Everything was going on. Everybody was clearing out the church so they could get it ready for the next service the following week. 
but nobody cleaned up the feces. Matter of fact, they forgot about it. And it almost seemed as if they didn't remember or notice it any longer. It no longer bothered them. After the first pile, it was like, hmm, 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 hmm. Oh, well, okay, let me get my purse. Let me get my coat. Let me get my jacket, my keys. You know, the husband's getting the kids ready so they can go on, leave the church and go home and or go out to eat or whatever they're going to do, their little Sunday routine. And the sound man is putting up the mics and winding up the wires and everybody's getting everything all cleared out. Everything's being put away, but nobody's doing anything about the feces. And what ends up happening is everybody goes home and everything's put away, but the feces is still there. Now, here is what I believe I got from that dream. We go through church as usual. We know we have men in our congregations who beat their wives, but we don't address it because that's their business. We know that there are women who are neglecting their children, but we don't report it. First, we should address them, and if they don't do anything about it, then we should let them know we're going to report it. But we don't do that because that's not our business. We're a body. We're all part of each other, but that's not our business. So we let things rot and we let things go and we ignore and the stench gets worse and worse and stuff just starts getting spread and smeared all over everything because nobody's cleaning anything up because nobody wants to be offensive and the preacher doesn't want to offend and the preacher doesn't want to lose his members because members equate to money. So the feces remains. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is what God is saying he sees when he looks down at his church a lot of times. When we think we're all that in a bag of chips is a religion or a denomination or whatever, God is looking at our mess. He knows that people are coming out of there getting on the internet and and, and working their body parts, getting all hot and bothered, watching porn. He knows some of the men, some of the married men are tipping out and getting prostitutes on the side because they want something a little more exciting. Your wife is old stuff. They want some new stuff. Or the wife is sitting up having coffee with some man she knows she has no business with because her man, her husband doesn't satisfy her in the bed and she's ready to feel like a natural woman. And since her husband doesn't fit the bill, she's going to go find her somebody who can pay it, who can satisfy her urges. Listen to what I'm saying, you guys. There's a lot of stuff. There's some churches where preachers, the pastors, are screwing everything that's got a skirt that lets them. And those women are stupid enough to be up under that kind of leadership. Think about it, you guys. There are women who are pastoring who won't address the issues she sees in her in her flock. You guys, listen, from the leader all the way out the door. You've got to deal with this stuff because what ends up happening is open, runny sores, infections, sickness, disease begins to spread contaminants everywhere, germs, uncleanness, and the church just goes down and down and down until you either totally are backslidden or God has lifted himself and said, Ichabod, the presence, the glory of the Lord is gone, baby. And you guys are down there having a country club because God has no part of it. He has washed his hands because you guys want to dress. Sin for what it is. Okay, I'm not fussing. I'm trying to get you to picture how God sees this. 
You know, you think because we live in the dispensation of grace, he's okay, you're okay, I'm okay, they're okay, everything's okay, and that's okay because we have grace. And with grace, God is forgiving and he's long-suffering and he's loving and all his, his tender mercies and all his mercies endure forever. But God has a bad side, baby, and that's wrath. And when he says, be ye holy for I am holy, he's not playing it's not a suggestion. I want you to just think about what I said. Pray about what I said. Where is your life? If God walked in, if Jesus, Jesus, okay, with the gown and the whole nine yards, walked into your house or your surrounding or right in on you, right when you're in the middle of doing your dastardly deed that nobody at church knows about, or maybe one or two just might and participate with you in a hidden manner. What would you guys do if he walked through the wall, stood in your midst, and you looked up and saw it was Jesus? What would you do? Try to put out the joint, try to hide, try to try to throw the, the bottle in the in a garbage can real quick, try to pull up your zipper or button up your blouse. What would you be doing when he walked in on you? Think about it, you guys. Shutting off your computer so he doesn't see what you're watching like he doesn't know. Think, think, think. It's one thing to be trying to get over something and you're still kind of in between, you know, opinions, but you really, you made up your mind, but you you know, just still coming out of it. That's one thing. But you out there slipping and sliding and you're sneaking and you're, you're hiding and you're tipping and you're towing and you're, you're lying and you're scheming and you're doing everything you can get away with. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself. Be ye holy, for God is holy. All that other stuff is an abomination to God. And I'm not going to talk for him because Isaiah said it for himself. Isaiah described, he actually quoted God and God spoke for himself. It is a stench unto my nostrils. Think about that when you do whatever you think you're doing for God. What does he really think of you? God bless you.